Hallelujah. Just wave your hands to Jesus, everyone. Together, let's lift our hands. Are you blessing him in the spirit? Lift your hands to Jesus in gratitude and as an expression of your confidence father we bless you indeed the victorious one we worship you bless him in the spirit bless him even in your understanding faithful god You do wonders in our midst. You do wonders in our midst. Powerful song. You do wonders in our midst. You're the faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are mighty in this place. Are you worshiping the King? You are mighty in this place. You are mighty. You are mighty in this place. You're the faithful God. Hallelujah, 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 faithful God, hallelujah, 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 you're the faithful God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now ask him for a visitation tonight. Lord, give me an encounter by your word. Be sure you are praying. Be sure you are praying. No distractions. Give me an encounter even by your word. The Bible says the Lord appeared again to Samuel in Shiloh by his word. Shiloh barakatus de lakatusia. An encounter by your word tonight that will change my life. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. You do not appear before the Lord and go down you do not appear before the lord and go back to yesterday it is always from strength to strength to strength to strength he says now the lord is that spirit there are many spirits but the lord is that spirit that spirit that lifts that spirit that blesses he says and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty 
And then he says, but we all with unveiled face, beholding us in a mirror the glory of God, he says, we are changed. We are changed. You never remain when you see him. You change. You change. You change. What does it mean to change? That what had victory over you yesterday no longer can have victory over you today because you have changed. That the words that came out from your lips that was downplayed by demons because it was powerless, that the next time you speak, that changed version of you will speak words that carry authority in the spirit. Hallelujah. My dear people, you sing one more song for me. Spirit, lead me where my trust. Let me Take me deeper than my faith could ever wander. My faith could That's what is happening to someone tonight. In the presence of my Savior. Spirit lead. Spirit lead me when my trust is without border. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will come. One more time. Spirit leads. Let me walk upon the water. Wherever you will call. Take me deeper. Take me deeper than my feet could ever walk. My faith. Can we sing it one more time? Just the voices. Spirit, Let me walk upon the water wherever you are. me deeper. my feet and the bible says when jacob dismissed his wives his cattle the bible says he was left alone and there came a man to him by night and wrestled with him and jacob refused to let that man go he said leave me for the day breaketh and jacob said i will not let you go unless you bless me and he said what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have had power with god and prevailed the bible says he touched the hollow of his thigh and he blessed him and the sun arose and he called that place peniel he says for i have seen god face to face and my life is preserved father give us an encounter that will transform our lives tonight give us encounters that will shift us to new spiritual dimensions and i pray that jesus be glorified tonight in jesus name i pray god bless you please be seated in the presence of the lord hallelujah we have very serious business tonight and I want you to coordinate your attention by the Spirit. Reject every form of distraction tonight because there are certain teachings that are applicable to certain people. There are teachings that are applicable to a particular gender or age range or um, geographic um, region. But there are teachings that are applicable to all men. Provided you are alive and provided you are a man. These teachings are very important. And tonight is one of such teachings. 
and it is my prayer that the Lord would cause that your time spent here tonight would be a, a destiny defining moment in the name of Jesus appreciate us everyone for the sacrifice within the auditorium outside everywhere Azaria family following and our global family following online may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ let me by way of honor just appreciate um, his excellency in our midst the ambassador I Anderson Madubike the Nigerian ambassador to Australia God bless you thank you God bless you bless you an honor to have you in the presence of the Lord sir may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ let's celebrate him amazing such a humble man thank you thank you thank you now he's insisting to say something we'll honor you please come up sir the Lord bless you hallelujah let's give him a minute even if it's just to say hello God bless you God bless you I'm embarrassed by this now God bless you thank you is a turning point of my life. I've been praying my whole life to meet him. I've been in diplomatic service for 29 years. God has blessed me so much. But I know the blessing that I'm going to get today will take me to another level. He's the only person I call the apostle of God in this great country. I am honored to meet you. God is good. Thank you. Let's bless him. Very, very humbling from His Excellency, the Nigerian Ambassador to Australia. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Amen. Indeed, the Lord will do you good in the name of Jesus. And every other special person here, may God bless you. This is Koinonia, the house of God. Praise God. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, and a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Let's get straight to the word tonight. Revelations chapter 2 and verse 17. Mighty God. Revelations chapter 2 and verse 17. Let me turn it very quickly so that we begin our teaching. Shali para kuske anamanakata. The Bible says. He that hath an ear, I'm reading from my Bible, King James. Let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Then it says, to him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna. And will give him a white stone. And in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save he that receiveth it grant us understanding O oh God in the name of Jesus Christ tonight's teaching is specially dedicated to those who have made a determination under God that they will live fruitful lives and lives that are dedicated 
to glorifying Jesus. Tonight's teaching is dedicated to people, men and women who have made up their minds that they will fulfill their divine call in Christ. Tonight's teaching is dedicated to those who have obtained the help and the mercy of God in their various endeavors and have tasted certain levels of greatness and certain levels of success. Tonight's message is also dedicated to those who have become weary as far as pursuing the purposes of God for their lives are concerned. Men and women who have been beaten down by the vicissitudes of life and are seeking perspective and an explanation as to the happenings around their lives. Tonight's teaching is also dedicated to those who are about to begin their journey as far as their spiritual experiences and destiny is concerned. So if you belong to any of these categories aforementioned, you're welcome to a teaching that indeed will transform your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. There are many names that believers are called in scripture. Theologically speaking, believers are classified in two groups when when God gives us our naming we are classified in two groups broadly there is the name that a believer is given by reason of his oneness with Christ these are the names that come on account of the privilege of the new birth for instance the Bible calls us sons of God the Bible calls us believers the Bible calls us one with Christ. It calls us joint heirs with Christ and even heirs of God. Jesus himself was teaching in John 15 and he said, I am the vine and he calls us branches grafted by that substitutionary sacrifice to the vine. But there are other names that he calls us not just based on identification but based on function for instance he calls us light for instance he calls us salt he calls us ambassadors he calls us a royal priesthood a holy nation a chosen generation a peculiar people these are names that attempt to describe our function but there are other names that are used in scripture as a testament of endurance as a testament of the strength and the stamina that an individual can derive from within his spirit many of them but one of them that is very important for the teaching tonight is called an overcomer the bible uses that term an overcomer to describe a believer who has sustained the grace and the stamina to run this race and to finish with honor and with dignity. Hallelujah. That it is possible for a believer in addition to being one with Christ, in addition to being the son of God, in addition to uh, the revelation of our, our identification, and then in addition to the names given as far as our function is concerned that you can you can receive this addition like a credential that more than the son of god that you are more than light and salt more than a king and a priest more than an ambassador more than all of these names there is a noble name that only the mouth of the lord can call a believer is called an overcomer Revelation chapter 2 and verse 17 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. And then it says, to him. So this is not a message to everyone. To him that overcometh. To him that overcometh, I will give. To eat of the hidden manna. Hmm. Number two, I will give him a white stone 
a stone with a name written on it which no man knows except the one who is given look at this kind of complicated reward just for being an overcomer the bible is very clear as to the fact that in the entire lifetime of any individual for that matter not necessarily a believer any individual that is privileged to walk upon the face of this earth the bible lets us know that god is not only the god of all flesh but he's also the god of times and the god of seasons we have dealt with the law of seasons please do well to listen to that teaching and that in your pursuit and your journey towards the knowledge of God towards fulfilling your divine call and assignment towards destiny the Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that the possibility exists that you can be challenged by situations and circumstances that attempt to impede your journey number one or attempt to fight you or attempt to stop you from finishing that journey or even attempt to stop you from starting the journey the bible is not silent as to the fact that these possibilities exist hallelujah yeah. the second information that is very interesting and important is that no single person wearing a mortal body is immune from the reality of these seasons that the only thing we are the guarantee that we are given in christ is that we can sustain the grace and the intelligence to rise above them but that in a man's lifetime it must be captured in your human experience seasons that represent pain seasons that represent discomfort seasons where defeat looks imminent this is a reality that we see even in the life of jesus our pattern man the bible tells us to look on to jesus calls him the author and the finisher of our faith the bible says who for the joy that was set before him the next word after that is endurance the bible says he endured you would think that because we are dealing with jesus you would not have to use such an expression for one who is the king of kings and the lord of lords why will the fountain of wisdom need to endure why will he who is the captain of the host of heaven why would you associate the creator with that word endurance who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross then number two it says despise the shame two things he did that the bible says is very instructive that in following jesus we must pay attention to the fact that even jesus was not immune from pain and shame now most people in church most believers in the body of christ have not been taught the spiritual systems put in place to deal with these seasons and these times in as much as we teach on victory in as much as we teach on the invincibility of the believer as far as his association with the christ is concerned we must be honest and matured enough to expose believers to the things that befall all men and to prepare their hearts so that if and when these seasons come the believers can sustain stamina to be able to go through these seasons and then return victorious are we together now so for instance we've had believers who have gone through unpleasant situations say during the pandemic and after the pandemic people have lost money who love jesus with all their hearts people have lost loved ones without answers there are people who the equation of their lives and destinies in spite of their committal to the things of god it doesn't seem to add up and many of them continue to ask secret questions and that is the responsibility of a shepherd in christ to be able to bring perspective and light to issues even difficult issues like this are we together first peter chapter 4 
and verse 12. Media, let's walk together, please. First Peter chapter 4, from verse 12 to 16. Apostle Peter is teaching us now, and here's what he had to say. Beloved, he said, so he's talking to those who are in Christ. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, he says, as though some strange thing happened to you. This is a very powerful information from a matured Christian who is an apostle. He's teaching and training you that you must be able to build a level of strength and stamina in the spirit that if and when you are confronted with uncomfortable situations that you do not address them as though some, some mysterious thing were happening to you. It says, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed ye may be glad also with exceeding joy next verse it says if ye be reproached for the name of christ happy are ye for the spirit of glory and god rested upon you on their part he is evil spoken of but on your part he is glorified 15 but none of you let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief so there are different dimensions of suffering now and as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters last verse these are various things that have sufferings attached to them yet if any man suffer as a christian let him not be ashamed but let him glorify god on this behalf scripture number two psalm 61 from verse one to three this is the cry of one who has been put down in life this is a distress a distress cry coming from a sincere heart unto god hear my cry oh god he says attend unto my prayer verse 2 from the end of the earth will i cry unto you in other words no matter where you are oh god hear me when my heart is overwhelmed hmm, it says lead me to the rock that is higher than i for thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy so the bible lets us know that it is possible listen carefully it is possible for a believer to go through a season in his life in the life of a ministry in the life of an organization in the life of a family in the life of a nation and in the life of a continent where it seems as though the word of God is not producing the kind of result that you believe for it to produce. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs 24 and verse 10. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. It says, if thou faint in the day of adversity. Everyone say the day of adversity. December 25th in Nigeria and across the body of Christ is generally, it's been a day that has been earmarked to celebrate Christmas. Is that true? Wherever you are across the world, once it's December 25th, usually people celebrate Christmas. There are days earmarked to celebrate Easter. Um, other religions like, like our Islamic brothers have days where they can select to celebrate different, you know, activities. Other religions have days. Now, the Bible is telling you that is not the only day you should pay attention to. That there is another day, please give it to us, called the day of adversity. Not the hour of adversity. Not the minute of adversity. Day there does not just mean 24 hour. It means season. There is a season of adversity. And he's giving you an information up hand that if you faint in the day of adversity, it is because your strength is small. It is not because the adversity 
naturally should sustain the power to overwhelm you but you did not build strength for that day are we still together in Ephesians chapter 3 Ephesians chapter 3 we'll begin our reading from verse 16 Ephesians chapter 3 Apostle Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus and he began to pray for them that they be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man everybody say strengthened with might in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love uh -huh, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height and to know the love of Christ which surpasseth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God next verse it says now unto him hmm, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think but all that is according to the power that works in us not just according to his power according to the capacity that works in us last verse says unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages so the Bible encourages us to be strengthened with might in the inner man. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9, again Apostle Paul is teaching here, and he says, let us not be weary in well-doing. Do not be weary. He's mentioning a word here now. That there is also a, there is a relationship, a strange relationship between weariness and well-doing. That a man can be involved in well-doing and yet be weary. He leaves you with an information that provides comfort. He says, for in due season, we will reap. If, if there is a condition, if we faint not, that means even if you have been um, committed to well-doing, if you faint, you may not survive the times where the harvest will come for you. I do not know one great man who became great properly with the dignity of kingdom integrity who does not have a story of these seasons of adversity, whether in ministry, whether in business, in fact, the Bible lists the credentials of the kinds of people you should follow. It says, follow them who through faith and patience. If you find results that did not come through faith and patience, it's advising you to run away because something is wrong with that result. Are we together now? Follow them, he says, who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. It is very important for us to know that adversity is a reality that will attempt every life, every family sooner or later. You know, by the privilege of what I do, I'm exposed to people's painful situation and the most obvious and I would say the most um, challenging, if I'm right on that, is anything that has to do with the loss of loved ones i am exposed literally every day to someone or some family that is attempting to make sense over the loss of a loved one or over loss of money or loss of a job some some kind of situation that represents adversity and over the years i've had to look for a scriptural and meaningful explanation to give perspective to those events because i i wish i can tell you you have all the answers at those times but there are times you'll be challenged with things that you will exhaust your intelligence from border to border and not find any answer that makes sense to such a situation now there are people who fail and go through things in life because of um obvious disobedience to kingdom principles as far as victory is concerned but I have seen in my life 
that there are others who you cannot exactly pinpoint anything wrong as far as they are complying to kingdom principles in as much as we can see is concerned and yet yet i have seen great people who love jesus christ pass on to glory painfully so i have seen people who love jesus with all their hearts go through tragedies i have seen families who love jesus with all their hearts i've seen patients sick who love jesus with all their hearts and they died quoting scripture they died saying by his stripes i am healed I've seen people who continue to declare that my tomorrow is great and they went, excuse me, they went to their place of work and returned back with a sack letter. I have seen people who have trusted God to make sense of every area of their lives, finances, spiritual life, marriage relationships parenting you know their jobs all kinds of situations the bible says listen very carefully according to psalm 27 verse 13 and 14 all men all men without exemption go through these seasons of weariness of adversity of frustration hardships challenges mishap and so on and so forth here's what it says psalm 27 13 and 14 i had fainted unless i had believed to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living verse 14 it says wait on the lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart wait i say on the lord scripture number two is a popular one isaiah chapter 40 verse 29 and 30 if you do not know this scripture it's a sign that there is a measure of laziness in your spiritual life because usually if you are one who is committed to prayer and fasting no matter how weak you should have come across this scripture it's a classic as far as the ministry of prayer and fasting is concerned the bible says he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increased strength now the reality is in verse 30 please read with me ready one to read even the youth shall faint <laughs> ladies and gentlemen look at what you are reading very carefully he's not talking about backsliding here this has nothing to do with backsliding this is the reality that befall men by reason of wearing a mortal body that there is the emotional wear and tear that can befall men now you know that the glory of the young people is their strength and yet the bible says as far as this season of adversity is concerned even the youth shall faint and be weary and it says the young men shall utterly So it is true that men can lose strength. It is true that people can go through seasons of adversity. I just feel like defining that word adversity. Please write it down. Adversity. From the word university, just remove uni and put AD. Adversity. What is adversity? I wrote down here a state of serious or continued difficulty or misfortune a state of serious or continued difficulty a state of serious or continued difficulty or misfortune so when we talk about adversity we talk about a state of continued difficulty or some form of misfortune hardships challenges mishaps you would imagine that these kinds of things should never happen to a believer and as far as the word of god is concerned we continue to declare and release our faith for days of victory but the reality of the life of a man upon this earth is that sooner or later something of this sort will either come 
to happen to you or to someone who is connected to you you know I've had the honor and the privilege of standing before many dead bodies in my life many some praying for them to come back to life others just standing and looking at the reality of the other side of life and I can tell you this every time I stand before a dead body I look at myself and everybody here or everybody standing there and I tell myself in truth the difference between us and this body if Christ tarries is time of course I know you will not believe me time every dead body you see was once alive to see another dead body are we together now how about people who lost money there are people who have lost millions and billions of naira and dollars in business and not all of them were corrupt and wicked and foolish people no some of them were sincere people like the gentleman i was so touched when he was the gentleman who received the breakthrough now you are attempting to give god all your salary which is a huge sacrifice and then some wind or rain comes to take away your roof listen job the book of job there's no time to go there but the book of job is a classic and and i i bless the lord for the fact that that book was represented in the bible it's not an extra biblical text so it qualifies to be called all scripture were inspired by god and it is also profitable the bible says for doctrine for rebuke for establishment in righteousness that the man of god be mature whole not missing in anything the bible tells us about this strange man called job how that he feared god and eschewed evil the wealthiest man in the east the bible records then the bible now flips to the realm of the spirit and begins to give us a very interesting picture that one time the sons of god came together and satan was in their midst now i'm not here tonight to argue the theological debate as to whether it was um satan still has access to the presence of god and so on and so forth this is not my assignment tonight but one thing i can tell you is the fact that he is not called angel or lucifer should already tell you that is already his fallen state are we together hmm. already we see the ministry of killing stealing and destroying with him and yet the bible says the sons of god were gathered and satan was in their midst and he said has thou considered my servant job and satan began a very dangerous proposition does he serve you for nothing have you not fortified him created a garrison around his life in other words who would not serve you with the kind of defense and protection give me permission he said to touch him and he says you can go then just make sure his life is spared then the bible says there was a certain day let me show you that scripture it always does the tragic story started with a certain day it says there was a certain day that means job woke up in the morning and said this is the day the lord has made thank you jesus not knowing that by evening he will be on the ground with dust on his body many people left their homes in peace and returned back in tears lord this is not my covenant with you this is not what i planned for and the bible tells us that this man called job back to back now i don't want to scare you i wish you had the courage to allow me read job chapter one and see the back-to-back -back testimonies that this man his children were blessing the lord something happened and for all of the tragedies there was one person left to come back and give him the story sir just to tell you your cattle everything is dead sir to tell you your sons and your daughters there is no man i know no man i know who may have gone through the kind of situation job went through within that time range everything happened within the day the bible says job sat on the ground and removed his clothes 
and Job did not count God unfaithful. He did not even, the Bible says that he fell down on the ground. And do you know what Job did? He worshipped. And worshipped. Where was your tears? And worshipped, knowing that all my children dead, my business dead, everything dead. The Bible says Job arose, he rent his mantle, he shaved his hair, he fell down and worshipped. We like to laugh at people and say Old Testament, but most people don't have the courage to do this, even with the Holy Ghost indwelling in them. That you can see these kinds of things and sit down on the ground. What kind of song are you going to sing? Sing it for me, let me hear. The song you sing after this kind of situation. Many of us, you misplaced 10,000. It's there. It's just that you can't find it. You are angry. You've, you've insulted God. You know the... You know the money is there. It's not like they stole it. It's just that you can't figure out where you kept it. And the anger, even in church, you can't raise a song. And here is a man who has lost everything. And the Bible says he bowed down and worshipped. And worshipped. Can I tell you this? every man under the sound of my voice will sooner or later be confronted with seasons and situations that will test your conviction and test everything you know and believe about god i wish i can tell you it will never happen but i'll be lying to you provided you are alive one day there is a day of adversity I was preaching somewhere and I gave a reference about Jesus going to the other side. And the Bible says, Jesus said, let us go to the other side. And when he began that journey, it was Jesus that said, let us go. So you can be sure that his all-seeing eye already saw the end from beginning. And yet, as soon as they started that journey, the Bible says, there arose a storm of wind with Jesus as the visionary with jesus as the one who sold that idea to go to the other side the bible says the wind was so boisterous water was getting into the boat and jesus was sleeping the disciples were angry and they had to go and tap him they said carest thou not that we perish are you not concerned that we can die and the bible says when he got up he rebuked the wind says shalom be still he rebuked the winds and everything was calm and he challenged them for their unbelief and they the rest of the story continues but forget that jesus overcame the fact that the storm did not fear him are we together now you would think the spirits would not even dare come near him one of the most scary scripture for me in the bible was what happened in um, I think that should be Matthew chapter 4. The temptation of Jesus. The Bible says after he was baptized, the Spirit of God drove him to the wilderness. He did not go to the wilderness to drink and smoke. He went to pray Jesus as the word and prayed and fasted for 40 days. Guess who he saw first when he was done? Satan! How do you see Satan? Satan! As the first person to welcome you after praying and fasting for 40 days you would think the prayer will drive him but the prayer was bringing him the tempter the bible will usually tell you what capacity satan is coming as whether as a deceiver as what now in this capacity he came as a tempter and he looked at jesus eyeball to eyeball do you look at Jesus and not shake and fall down after fasting and prayer with the power of the Holy Ghost, the Word of God, anointed again? What should make someone powerful that was not in him? And yet Satan walked as if he was not seeing him. 
he said mr man you are hungry admit it you are anointed but you are hungry uh, i i know that you are you created the heavens and the earth but you need food now and jesus did not say no i know I'm, I'm the lion of the tribe no satan discerned he was not there but he said you are hungry let me show you that you still you have a problem with all your anointing there is hunger how do you bring such a demeaning statement to such El Shaddai the man who created the heavens and the earth and he says turn this stone to bread and Jesus said no my agenda is greater than my individual satisfaction it is not about me the next temptation the Bible says he took him to the top of the temple a place of worship with people praying there and yet Satan stood at the top of the church and said mr. man I'm dropping you here fall down for it is written so don't think I'm ignorant he shall put his angels charge over you they will bear you up on their wings lest you dash your feet against the stone don't forget who Satan is talking to here Jesus so don't be carried away by the fact that Michael threw him down from heaven. He's standing with Jesus now and he's talking to Jesus as if Michael were greater than him. Number three, the Bible says he picked him up. Not that he said, follow me. He held him and took him into an exceeding high. The, the Bible says he took him more. How do you take somebody? He took him into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. Because every kingdom, there are three things that make a kingdom. A, every kingdom must have glory. It must have the power and authority that backs it represented by the scepter. Are we together now? And it must have inhabitants there. And the Bible says he showed them the glory. And here's what he said, verse 9. Satan now. You don't know how stubborn he is all these things i will give you if you fall down and worship me all these things i will give you if you fall down and worship me and jesus said verse 10 get thee ten satan for it is written thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shall thou serve then the bible makes a very scary statement it says and the devil leaveth him in fact one synoptic account said he left him for a season that in other words don't think as i'm going you will not see me again mm -mm. provided you left heaven and came to it you will find me the next time satan would come he did not come directly to him again he came through one of the most disciplined and emotional person called peter he chose one who was the leader over the people and he manipulated peter's compassion to beg jesus not to die he said jesus you know don't don't go to the cross don't do this and and he rebuked him and said get be behind me satan peter said me i just finished talking to you about the church i'm i'm and he says satan desire to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he says and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren satan left and said you saw me the next time satan will come people were having dinner and he came through the treasurer you see why finance department in many ministries must pray like prayer warriors too there is nobody in any ministry who not who should not be a prayer warrior don't say mine is just to join why are you pray because the devil will use anybody and anything are we together satan came through judas i hope you know the, the goal of judas was not to destroy jesus that's why he could not do anything with the money the goal was to make money from jesus jesus was misusing privileges financial opportunities were passing him up and down and he said do you know what let me last with you and give you jesus and then leave him to deal with you and show you his savior so he was surprised when jesus gave himself and he said no this was not the plan and he went and hung himself don't think judas was a bad man no for jesus to trust judas with money he was one of the most trusted people there
<laughs> you know, I was laughing. Someone shared a very interesting story that kidnappers kidnapped someone's child and they demanded for 50 million and the family called them and said all they have is 50,000. <laughs> and the kidnappers insulted them and off the phone <laughs> in anger and said if they don't bring up to 5 million, they will finish the people and the man said, honestly, there's nothing they can do. They should just keep. <laughs> hmm. Are we together? In other words, we've done our best. Whatever it is, at least we're sure he's born again. <laughs> Let him. Amen. All men can be weary. People can go through challenges in their lives. And so it is not unusual, the Bible says. But let me tell you this. There are basically three reasons, and I want you to listen very carefully. There are three reasons that cause, or three factors that are responsible for these seasons of frustration hardship challenges i want you to listen very carefully every one of us seated under the sound of my voice would have gone through or will go through one or more of these seasons are you ready the first reason why people become weak why people become fatigued spiritually and otherwise why people become discouraged the very first reason listen carefully is what I, I term the deference of hope or hope deferred. Write it down, please. Disappointed expectations can dampen people's spiritual lives. Disappointed expectations can dampen people's finances. You put your money in the business or an investment and it crashes and you're in trouble. You try to buy a land, eventually you find out there's a court case around that land and they tell you they will get back to you or you submit your CV and for a long time, two, three years, you know, sometimes I wonder when people share testimonies here and then they say, after I did this and that or maybe when the word came, a job I applied for for three, four years now called me. Can you imagine how long that? The, the issue is not the miracle. The issue is the endurance to have waited three, four years. Are we together? The deference of hope. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. Write it down please. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. It says hope deferred makes the heart sick. And when the desire cometh, the Bible says it is a tree of life. Please look at me. Do you know why many young people in this country are already beginning to face medical conditions that you would think only people in their late 50s and 60s right now you can see a young boy in his early 20s having the same symptom with someone who is probably 65 seven years because of hope deferred haven't spent five six seven ten years multiple programs in school most of them live with joy in their heart expecting to get a job immediately and from that time 10 years 15 years 20 years no job no nothing financial issues marital issues fertility issues i think one of the most depressing of all issues in my opinion as i have seen is the issue of fruitfulness where people will dance and celebrate everybody will celebrate with them speak prophetic words and 10 15 years later the couple are still waiting especially you see let me tell you this especially if you are in a position where you also have to minister to others i've had the privilege to cry and pray with many preachers and sometimes when you see them cry their heart over these issues it can be hope deferred can be frustrating you will need the grace and the strength of god if god is speaking to you say amen, amen. 
Number two, very quickly. What is the second reason? Now pay attention. Why people's faith is dampened. Why their zest and their zeal goes down. The second is attacks and persecution. Write it down please. The second reason why believers become discouraged. Why they do not have the strength to continue. Is attacks and persecution. Now listen very carefully. Attacks and persecution. Very very serious. James chapter 1 please. From verse 1 to 4. I pray someone is learning tonight. James 4 from verse 1 to 4. James 1. I meant to say forgive me. James 1 from verse 1 to 4. James 1. It says James a servant of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 stripes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Uh huh. It says my brethren. So he's speaking to believers. Look up please. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations knowing this. There is an information that you have to know that the trying of your faith listen carefully worketh patience verse 4 it says but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect the word perfect there is mature and entire wanting nothing count it all joy listen to me many of you here have tasted greatness at different levels in politics in government in family life in spirituality ministry whatever it is and I can tell you there is a cross there is a burden of greatness that most people do not know if most people understand the burden that is associated with greatness you will not hurry into greatness you will rather pray for strength and stamina are we together now it is easy to be carried away by the glamour and the prestige that is around the great and not know that every great man is also carrying a cross. Ask those in business. Ask those in politics. You know, many times we complain that politicians are corrupt people and all of that. But you imagine someone who gets a position and there are over 130 people connected, both extended and nuclear family, hoping to eat from that position. And everybody is calling and saying, my uncle, you are a wicked man, you are a devil, you can help me, what is this? And now this man has this to deal. The temptation to already go there and begin to touch resources is already there because of that reality. Let me tell you this, greatness needs a skill for you to remain there. In fact, the easiest part of the equation of greatness is becoming it. Remaining great is harder than becoming great. We all aspire to rise to different levels of greatness in the kingdom, whether in ministry, there are people every time I pray for people, ministers, apostle, I want to be like you. Apostle, I want to do this. And sometimes I, I feel guilty trying to lay hands on those people because I'm asking, I hope I'm not destroying this destiny by exposing you to an anointing whose battle you know nothing about. Every mantle has the battle that confronts it. You want to be CEO in Africa? Are you ready to stand the attacks and the charms and the wizardry and the witchcraft that follows greatness? I want to go into oil and gas. Congratulations. Are you ready for the biases that go through that sector? I want to be a politician. Do you know what it means to live every day with threats for the rest of your political career? Someone is eyeing you and vowing if you are alive by next week. And yet you have to smile through the storms. Can I tell you, the great deserve your applause. Most people have no idea that greatness is a burden. Many times when God does not bring it to a life of an individual, it is not him, it is not wickedness. It is his mercy looking at you and saying, let me not wreck this fragile destiny that is not yet fortified with knowledge. And so he withholds certain things to let you grow. Hallelujah. I remember many years as a man of God, many years ago, um, I, I, I really had 
problems. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm one person who doesn't like trouble at all. I want to make sure I call everybody, respond to everybody, do everything to everybody. And it was wearing me out. I didn't have time for myself. People would call me 12, 1 a.m. and, you know, express their disappointment that I'm resting. You know, and sometimes they try to bully you by saying, great men, you know, they are praying through the night, what, you know, and so on and so forth. And at a point in time, I had to obtain grace from God to be delivered by him so that I don't become a victim of all these things. But I can tell you greatness comes at a cost. I remember a gentleman who I think he, he lost, some, I, don't, I don't know which of the relatives and for more than one month, that gentleman kept sending me text messages. Apostle, I will not let you rest until you give me an answer as to why this kind of thing happened to my family. I agree that I'm not close to God, but I know you are close to God. Ask him for me. And he meant it. Now, I know you can laugh at the gentleman until you go through something that wrecks your destiny and puts and almost a full stop. attacks and persecution for as long as you are not great your watch is okay for as long as you are not great a man of god says nobody researches failure people only research success when you fail nobody will go and check and say i need to find out why you have failed except you succeed then you find all kinds of things the moment you succeed something is wrong with your watch it's supposed to be worn well something is wrong with your trouser you didn't you know hold it well something is everything is wrong with the great it is the burden of greatness are you learning something very very important attacks and persecution jesus himself said that in this life you will receive cars and houses and etc with persecution with persecution I'm telling you this because you see the truths that you are hearing from many of you will lift you above the current realms of success you are experiencing and for many others will bring you into that realm but as soon as you are done celebrating the glory and the grace of God in that realm you must be taught the ethics of remaining it's a very delicate realm it's a realm that can wreck you emotionally have you not heard of great people who committed suicide why should a billionaire commit suicide with all the money there why should someone holding a great position remember when the people were arguing and were insulting moses are you the only one god will speak to we want to hear him too moses went to god and said these people will worry me and god said all right let me speak to them separate yourselves rule number one for what that's the condition to hear him after three days they were angrily waiting at the mountain and then he came in cloud and fire and tongue turned that into their brains and their stubborn heads as soon as that happened do you know what they said listen listen they said god don't ever talk to us again from today talk to moses we will believe him but if that did not happen many of them would not believe that God's not talking to them was an act of his mercy. They didn't have the capacity to hear his voice and see the fire, the flame of his glory. They would not listen. Attacks and persecution. Maybe it is already happening to some of us now in your place of work. Maybe it is about to happen to some of us right now. You had a vision of the next level. Congratulations next level will always come with challenges the moment you are great something is wrong with your children the moment you are great something is wrong with you but thou O oh lord are the shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord and a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head so number one factor that is responsible for the weakness and the weariness of believers is the difference of hope disappointed expectations 
Number two, persecutions. Can I tell you? Jesus, who was the son of the living God, for as long as he was a young boy, he could freely enter the temple and learn with the scribes and Pharisees. Nobody had a problem with him. But the day the Holy Ghost landed on his head and the voice said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. He returned in the power of the Holy Spirit and the Bible says his fame went abroad. There was a group of people who said, look, this young boy, there is something wrong with this gentleman. Something is wrong. The whole city is already beginning to hear your voice. And they started finding an occasion. And because Jesus was a man, they found it. They found an occasion. Remember when they were before Herod? All kinds of troubles. This guy said he would destroy the temple that took us decades and build it in three days. He was talking about the temple of his body. Nobody asked him, what were you really talking about? That was not their business. It was an occasion. One day someone will come and stand before your pharmacy and see it as big as this auditorium and say, investigate the life of these people. I know them. There is no way who would have given you one billion naira. You are a thief. I will not rest until we dig into this. Welcome to the world of men. One day your father will win an election or your uncle or your mother and you will be surprised the new name you will be called. You will think it will be a name of honor and glory until they call you a fraudster. You, they catch you in, 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 in a KFC buying food of 5,000. They will insult your father for it. How you afforded 5,000? How about a preacher? For as long as you're small and not doing anything and not making any impact, that's all right. Nobody has that time. But may God begin to honor you and grant you grace. And then you see all kinds of things. How about business people? Someone calls you today, I'm in UK. Someone calls you tomorrow, you're in US. Must you say it? But that's where you are. Should you lie? Just say, I'm not available. Why must you say I'm in US? We must you draw me that you see and from the sincerity of your heart welcome to the world of men you stand in the midst of people and you have your watch or your shirt that is god is showing his faithfulness through you are in trouble for that even if it's a burial while you are standing there you will think that people are just crying only remember for what we have done people are watching you and as soon as that burial is done they will tear you the way you pieces you know protein meat in, in, in the kitchen do you have the stamina? Can I tell you this? Jesus got to a point where he was fed up with all the things they were doing. And when he knew that there was still more left. Dear people, let me tell you this. If it is the glory of God you are going to carry in your life, you must sustain the strength. You will go through high waters. You will go through things that are not your business at all. Are we together now? Yeah. Someone called me one day and said, I hear you know so-so so politician. I said, what does that mean? Doesn't he have brothers and sisters? Oh, and um, this and that and that. And I told him, I said, I'm not a politician. I'm a man of God. I'm a friend to politicians. I love them. I don't run away from them. I believe I have a ministry to them. But if you are calling me to discuss matters of politics, please, short i don't have that time you see that now because any position god puts you in will come with his own troubles you wait till god elevates you to a position somewhere and someone will come to meet you and say sorry this man who is your friend he's owing me 10 years money from business can you force him for me and he said no no no, i'm not in that and then you're in trouble persecution and criticism whether you belong to Jesus or you belong to Satan, one thing that is common to them both is we don't let them rest. There is persecution at both ends. So whether you decide to serve Jesus or you decide to serve Satan, one thing you will not escape if you are close enough to any of them is persecution. We don't let demons rest. Every week you see what happens here, week in, week out. So the whole thing is in different dimensions. 
What have I done that people don't like me? You succeeded. What have I done? You are changing lives. What have I done? You are making a mark in destinies. It is not always what you are doing wrong. It may be what you are doing right. Number three, very quickly. What is the third reason why people get discouraged and get weary even in the kingdom? The third reason is called sorrow. Many of you really do not know what sorrow is. Sorrow is an emotional state. Medical people will tell you that this thing we call sorrow is not just a sociological concept. It is, it is deeply emotional and even a medical condition. The feeling of distress, the emotional, the emotional, um, what's it now? The emotional pain that comes as a result of disappointments, as a result of misfortunes, as a result of losses, is one thing for you to go through seasons that are uncomfortable, but when the seasons get to you, they produce what we call sorrow. Are you learning? First Peter chapter 1, we'll read the first eight verses. First Peter chapter 1, please. If God is speaking to you, say amen. amen. Let's start from verse 2. Did I get that right? No, first Peter, first Peter chapter 4, from verse 12. First Peter chapter 4. Let's look at verse 12 to 16. Beloved, okay, I read it already. Think not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you next verse but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of christ's suffering look up please whose suffering is it called that means when you go through listen to me when you go through uncomfortable seasons on account of your love and your determination to become all that God has destined you to be the Bible says it is not your suffering you are only partaking of Christ's sufferings and the Bible says there is a relationship between sufferings and glory it says the sufferings of Christ and the glory that shall be revealed that ye may be glad also with exceeding joy next verse it says if ye be reproached for the name of christ the name of christ does not mean when you are directly preaching the gospel on account of your adherence to the principles of the kingdom that you are now excelling and then as a result there are all kinds of things happening to you it says happy are you for the spirit of glory and of god rested upon you it says on their part he is evil spoken of but on your part he is glorified very very powerful scripture of course the warning is already there none should suffer as a murderer thief evildoer busybody in other men's business and all of that if you suffer as a christian he says do not be ashamed do not be ashamed people persecute you because they thought you would use a political position or any position of honor at all to siphon resources and you have refused you choose the reproach of christ than all of these things let me tell you in africa people will get at you they will say you wasted eight years you wasted whatever years you wasted 30 years serving and you had an opportunity to take your share of the national cake and you refused and you did not let others take it there are many sincere people today in this nation and across africa whose children cannot walk freely with joy because of the anger that people have concerning their success and their victory there are people who today cannot come and give testimony in church is the reason why wealthy and blessed people hardly come to give testimony at best they may just tell the man of god and he prays for them because they are afraid of their own lives that every time people rise we live in a context that makes people feel guilty for the word of god working for them chances are that if you see a beautiful car just pass you can just look and say these wicked corrupt evil people 
you will vomit every one naira you are you see and it may not be so until you hear the story behind them or individuals who are excelling at any level sorrow it is not unusual to be saddened to be depressed to be downcast as a result of these situations Jesus himself got to a point where he was fed up and he was weary when he went to Gethsemane you would think he would just be rejoicing listen to me isn't it amazing that when Job went through what he went through Job worshipped when Jesus went through what he went through Jesus was willing to say father is it possible to negotiate this Job didn't complain, no, he worshipped. But Jesus is about to get to the cross and the whole pain of all that he had gone through and the people he was going to die for were not even appreciating him. How many children today look at their parents and insult them and say, shame on you. Other people are taking their children around the world. We are here and you can only take us to this school. All you can do is pay our school fees. And it can be painful as a responsible father and mother and you look and say what kind of a child is this you are not grateful that i can send you to school am i the one who gave birth to myself they will respond to you there are times when your good can be evil spoken of it brings sorrow it brings sorrow i know a man years ago who went to do an act of charity in a region somewhere and when he went at the at the end of it they persecuted that man and insulted him and said shame on him that for his status for him to go and give the the mini gifts that he gave the people there they said other ordinary people had done something better it was just a contribution Have you seen people that you give them a bag of rice and they say, where's the salt? Where is Maggie? You just gave rice like that. <laughs> Listen, beloved people of God, I know we are laughing, but I want you to pay attention because many of you right now, this is one of the things that closed the door to your heart of compassion. You were not like that. There are many loved ones who have been changed as a result of the evil heartedness of people. There are people who have vowed today to never help anybody who is not their children in the nuclear family again because they've invested in too many people who have brought them heart pain. Have you seen such kind of families? There are many people who took other children. All their children are well behaved and all those they outsource to help have caused trouble. They have slept in the station. They have gone through all kinds of trouble because of someone else's child. It can be very painful the sorrow the the bleeding of the heart that comes on account of your greatness and on account of your intention to serve the purposes of Jesus how about sincere people who have gone to pray with families and they just box them together as men of God and say all these prophets moving from house to house looking for food to eat whereas some of them were sincere people who were praying from the depth of your heart with families there are some of us men of God is almost like a cross day and night people believe that every man of God who God is helping is either using a charm somewhere or he's using some some uh, 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 you know one whatever, whatever that demonic something that you ate and you swallowed and, and so on and so forth the moment people see the spectacular manifestation of the hand of God upon a life how about people who are blessed you see the moment people do not understand your life and your lifting the moment you become a mystery people will give their interpretation to everything around your life there are sincere people who have suffered and continue to suffer across boards all around the body of Christ on account of what God has done and is doing in their lives There are great people who have been faithful, who have served, who have done all kinds of things and they have not received the rewards that befit their sacrifices. Whether in office, you hear someone will say, I have served 
for 30 years i have served for 40 years and some of them are retired in shame and pain and just left like that some of the ideas that have driven many companies many organizations today the people who were the brain behind those ideas continue to live unrewarded lives today some of them are not even recognized whether as a nation as corporations people have brought all kinds of ideas and concepts that have produced victory tremendous victory for organizations and all kinds of platforms and yet those people remain rejected dejected and so on and so forth i may be talking about you i may be describing you but can i tell you something you must obtain grace through this teaching tonight to understand the spiritual dynamics of being and remaining an overcomer say i am an overcomer please shout it say i am an overcomer now very quickly i want to share with you five keys five keys and then we'll pray five keys that you must engage every time you meet the days of adversity every time you meet seasons that are uncomfortable in your life there are five biblical keys that that are the road map for you i give you a guarantee by the integrity of the word of god if you follow these five keys they will inevitably bring you triumph and victory above out of and over any situation whatsoever are we together pray in one minute and declare that the lord should grant you the miracle of open eyes please go ahead and pray mighty god Are you praying? Grant me the miracle. Shedi baratu sedi balada balada ush. Say to those that are fearful hearted. Do not be afraid. The Lord your God is strong and in his mighty hands when you call on his name. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary ones, your God will surely come. He will come and save you. This is a prophetic word for someone. You will not end up in that situation. While you are there, I want you to know that his majesty is coming with triumph. He will do it in the open in the presence of everyone and they will know that he has come to you as Ebenezer in the name of Jesus Christ number one the first key if you want to live the life of an overcomer in the presence of challenges the vicissitudes of life the first key listen carefully is the revelation of the love of God you must have a strong revelation of the love of God please pay attention you must draw your strength from the fact that you are his beloved you want to write that down beloved that he loves me very simple statement but is powerful if you know anything about people who are in love there is nothing they will not do for one another so the awareness and the consciousness that i am not only his son but i am also his bride his jealousy is there to defend me 
first john chapter 3 and verse 1 let's look at a few scriptures you want to live the life of an overcomer the bible says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us behold what manner of love that means look at the extent of love that he has so lavish towards you because let me tell you this when you go through hope that is deferred when you go through persecutions and all kinds of tribulations and criticisms listen carefully when you go through all kinds of um, emotional strains that come from this thing sorrow chances are that you will begin to reconsider the reality of God's love towards you do you really love me the first thing that went wrong when the boat was about to capsize with the disciples is they are they are listen to what they told Jesus carest thou not that we perish in other words why are you acting this irresponsible to what we are going through you seem to be non-responsive to our situation the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the love of God the love of God Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 3 is a popular scripture here I have loved you with an everlasting love this is God unashamedly like a man declaring his love to a woman that he loves with all his heart he's saying it here i have loved you with an everlasting love it says and i have drawn you with my loving kindness i have loved you everybody say he loves me, he loves me. yes sir when you have a revelation of the love of god then you know that he's not silent listen carefully what's that song now he never sleeps he never slumbers he never tires of hearing our prayer when we are weak he becomes stronger so rest in his love and cast all of your care on him can we sing it one more time powerful song that he never sleeps he never slumbers he never tires of hearing our prayer when we are weak he becomes stronger so rest in his love and cast all of your care on him listen so rest in his love and cast all of your cares on him it's an advice it's an instruction in righteousness so rest in his love and cast all of your cares god is speaking to you so rest in his love cast all of your cares you are not the first to fail in business listen please rest in his love cast all of your cares you're not the first to go through a barrenness situation that seems shameful so rest in his love cast all of your cares on him you're not the first to be challenged by armed robbers and kidnappers no find rest I will rest in his love cast all of my cares this is a prophetic word to a family to an individual you may be a man of god here you are in a season where things are not working ministry is as if god did not call you others have turned to tell you just go and look for a job because this is your thing we don't know the name of what you are doing There are times when the results are not obvious. It is very painful because there is no explanation you can give. There are times where people will ask you, where is your fasting and where is your prayer? There are times, it's a popular thing, especially across Africa. Where is your God, they say. Where is your God that people are dying in your family? Pastor, where is your God? 
that while you are preaching you do not have a child yourself they say so rest in his love cast all of your cares hear me only answer questions that have rewards don't cheapen yourself to respond to every question you will be asked in life why is this family like this if you love the Lord it's an unnecessary question learn to rest in the love of Jesus Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 Jesus is speaking now and we know huh, we know it's an information that is privy to those who are in the kingdom if you are out of this kingdom you may not know because it does not look like it those who are out of the faith walk by their sensory perception but we who are in the kingdom the bible says we are privy to an information we know that how many things including the painful departure of a loved one all things including the loss of the job please hear me all things including the appointment you thought would be you and it was someone else all things all things work together for the good of them that love god this is a love realm this is a love affair to them who are the called according to his purpose how many things all things Apostle, I missed my flight. All things work together. If you learn to see through the eyes of the Spirit, you will be grateful. Grateful. Don't sit down and say, this family. Is it that nobody will rise in this family? No, no, no. Learn to say thank you. Lord, I do not know what you are doing, but I am grateful. Because in your wisdom, hmm, I trust your love for me. We have some of our little children in the ministry and many times if i make them a promise that i'm going to buy them something if they see me they don't care whether i'm under the anointing or whether i'm under whatever they will remind me and come with absolute confidence and they use an implicating word daddy they don't call me apostle they call you apostle that's membership daddy is relationship so they run and come to me yesterday while we're having our time with the school of ministry students they just came to me and said ah there was something they wanted to eat and you see the moment they say daddy they leave that one is either you are really daddy daddy is not by you have to demonstrate the capacity to provide or you now have to painfully look at these children and say sorry you people should live here there are times where you should not be embarrassed to be a child again and let Abba carry you. When the oceans roll and thunders roll, I will soar with you above. Father, you are king over the storms. Here's your part that i will be still and know you our god my soul be still and know you ah. i will be still and know you our god my soul be still and know you when the oceans and thunders roar I will soar with you above the sky Father you are king over the storms and I will be still and know you our God I will be still and know you I will be still Oh, receive it as a prophecy to your life. I will be still and know you. I will be still and know you, my God. 
I will be still and know you. Joseph voices. I will be still. I will be still and know you. I will be still. I will be still and know you. So you can look at your rent eyeball to eyeball you can look at your child in the ICU and with the pain in your heart you can look at your health and the medical diagnosis that you have cancer and you are about to go and you can sing this song not to an audience you sing a song where you are the minister and you are the audience yourself there are times you need to be the prophet of your destiny ladies and gentlemen please hear me you need to summon courage tonight father you are king over the storms i will be still and know you our god i will be still Don't be ashamed of your tears. Jesus wept. It is not inhuman to cry. It is not lack of spirituality to cry. Hmm. Be still and know you are God. I'm not singing. I'm ministering to you. Be still and know you are God. Listen to me. When Satan wants to destroy you, he will isolate you and magnify everything around you so that you no longer see the faithfulness of God. All you see are mountains around. All you see is the situation or that, that seems to negate what God has said. Hear me! I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. Be strong. Be strong. There is something called the life of an overcomer. You can stand and look at everything. Young man, will you be able to rise one day and take care of mama? I may not be able to show you any result right now. I don't have much to say. Let my future do the speaking. I will be still and know you. I will be still and know you. Hear me. I want you to find strength in the love of God. A Christian is not just one who goes to church. A believer is one who is so jealously loved by the God of heaven. Look beyond your challenges. Please hear me believers. I'm ministering to you by the spirit. No matter what the pain is. Look beyond it. And look at Jesus. Don't just look at him as the powerful God. You need to look at him as father. Lord, I know that you love me. Your jealousy has been so invested in my life. This I believe. There are people going through all kinds of storms right now. Listen to me. Though I walk through the valley glow, I'll fear no evil. By the water still my soul, my heart will trust in you. My heart will trust in you. Listen to what I'm saying. This is not a special number. My heart will trust. In you, Lord, my heart will trust in you. Apostle, you're only speaking now because you have food to eat at home. As I'm sitting right now, I have three children, four children. I do not even know how they are going to eat after service. Can I minister to you? Find strength. It always does not look like it. This is what makes you an overcomer. There is no gift of overcoming. No. Overcoming is not a gift. He that overcomes, he says, that you will be given a white stone 
you will be given a name on that stone you will be given a a mystery manner that provides strength notice what he does the first thing he does to the overcomer is he strengthens you by giving you manner that gives you strength there is always a word from god that makes you an overcomer the revelation the bible says in romans chapter 8 and verse 28 we read it that all things not some things please listen to me it is not unusual for you to cry you will find many instances in your life where you have to cry cry with your children cry with your company you know after the pandemic last year believe me without exaggeration there were many people who retired from ministry and said i'm tired with this serving god i cannot serve god like this and have my children beg for bread i hang my boots lord just know that i'm born again but as far as serving you is concerned discouragement how about those who lost their jobs some of you here looking at me how about those who have gone through all kinds of tragedy you started this year with joy not knowing that you will have a reason to cry and now from bereavements to disappointments to pain when you know that he loves you you can find strength because perfect love has a unique ability to cast out fear if you know that he loves you you can find strength listen to me brothers and sisters do not let the devil use your challenges to interpret the love of god no no satan is a master of the flesh realm he can use everything happening to you and make you think is this how love acts i thought the bible says love gives where is the giving financially where is the giving maritally where is the giving in terms of fruitfulness where is the giving in terms of politics find strength dear ones there is the revelation of the love of god that he who began a good work in me he who began a good work in me oh that's a prophetic word to someone he'll be faithful to complete it ah. he'll be faithful to complete it he who started the work He'll be faithful to complete it. Hear me. The same energy it takes to continue is the same energy it takes to go back. You must make up your mind. Whether you go back or go forward is the same energy you will dissipate. Make up your mind that I will take that leap of faith even if it means to walk on water. That if I perish, let it be that I perish at his word. number two let's hurry up we need to pray ah, my spirit is fired up i know that god is ministering very deeply to people in this place allow him heal those wounds and bring you a life of victory number two what is the second key that grants us the grace to live as overcomers in spite of challenges are you ready the second is the power of the word particularly the administration of comfort that comes with scripture the power of the word engage the power engage the word the bible brings us comfort romans chapter 15 and verse 4 scripture can bring comfort to the believer for whatsoever things were written aforetime let's look at a few things that were written aforetime abraham waited 25 years 
he still had a child written a four time job went through all kinds of things you would look at job and think his end had come but at the end of his life he had twice everything that he lost written a four time what else was written a four time a young shepherd that looked like he had a destiny without color and without dignity serving sincerely but remaining a mediocre now exalted to become king written a four time the arrogance of kings outside of god and they were brought down to their knees written a four time the bible says whatsoever things were written aforetime they says they were written to make us students why so that we through the patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope hmm. so every time i open my bible and i read through these stories i read that once upon a time the nation of israel stood before the red sea in front of them the egyptians coming with fierce anger behind them and God still came as a deliverer, written a four time to make me a student that God is able to save to the uttermost. Are we together? That once upon a time, humans, not a parable, they were so hungry on earth. Manna came, not grains that they had to prepare. Angels' bread came. Written a four time. Once upon a time, the land of Samaria was ravaged with hunger. In 24 hours, God turned their lives around, written a four time to make me a student. One time, Paul and Silas were jailed, bound, hand and feet. The Bible says at midnight, they prayed, they sang aloud and everybody heard them. Suddenly, the mighty deliverer came. There is nothing that is new under the sun. There are people who started from ground and God lifted them up. There are people in ministry. There are people in business. There are people in career. Listen to me, gentlemen and ladies, believers, people of God. Koinonia, the body of Christ. God is speaking to us. Whenever you go through situations that look challenging, that is not the time to run away from scripture. That is the time to stay true to the word of God. psalms 119 verse 28 psalms 119 and verse 28 shilano skati branda kazuzi atakata it says my soul melted for heaviness strengthen thou me according unto thy word my soul is melting oh god overwhelmed by the challenges and the vicissitudes of life not knowing where to go left or right not knowing how to manage my life in light of all of these things when you look at the things happening across our nation africa these things look discouraging it looks like you should just run away and people are committing suicide people are swallowing all kinds of things to just die in their sleep it says my soul melted for heaviness strengthen thou me according unto thy word the word of God is a comforter and the word of God is a strengthener because you see the dynamics is this the power of God only follows what he says if God has not said it it is illegal for his power to come to the scene so the word of God is a compendium of what he has said when you find what he has said you can be sure his power is following what he has said are we together Genesis chapter 21 from verse 1 and 2 the Bible says and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken if he says it if he speaks it he will do it for Sarah conceived that is a testimony and bear Abraham a son in his old age it says at the set time which God had spoken so you need to draw strength from scripture scriptures like yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death the bible says i fear no evil why for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me he says thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies that you anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of these are scriptures that must comfort you at these times. 
if it's a bereavement you must comfort yourself that the bible says one day there will be the sound of the archangel and that those who are dead in christ will arise first and we who are alive and remain remain where in him we will be caught to meet to 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 meet them in the air and then happily after rejoicing with jesus it says i know my redeemer leave it let the weak say i am strong let the poor say i am rich let the depressed say i am encouraged and strengthened by the power of god most believers are not students of scripture and so when these seasons come there is no legitimate way to draw strength in fact for most people they do not know how to draw strength from scripture at best they draw strength from respectfully speaking maybe movies or visitations from people but most believers do not know how to sit down with the word and draw strength from it you can draw strength from the word ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1 and 2 the bible says he said unto me son of man stand up upon your feet and i will speak unto thee and the bible says it did not have that strength but from that word the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that i heard him that spake unto me you must learn to draw strength from scripture number three is someone learning what do you do to remain an overcomer during the times of adversity during the times where things look unpleasant number three engage in strategic prayers strategic prayers number three engage in strategic prayers psalm 34 from verse 4 please to 7 psalm 34 i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from how many all my fears i sought the lord the deliverance did not just come i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears and have verse five they looked unto him the bible says and they were lightened and their faces were not ashamed six this poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of how many all his troubles not some verse 7 the angel of the lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them you can engage in prayers can i tell you one of the assignments of the spirit of heaviness what we know in the medical world as depression is to bring you to a point of silence because if you can open your mouth and agree with god his power can come to bear depressed people are silent people when you see people get to a point where they just sit down how are you sir and then after five minutes they just say nigeria What else are life? What else are if I don't wake up tomorrow, just know that this one is for you, this one is for your brother. I rebuke the spirit of heaviness over anyone here in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible declares to give them beauty for ashes. Is that true? the oil of gladness for the spirit of heaviness a garment of praise for that 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 spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified strategic prayers psalm 61 from verse 1 to 4 please write this because for many of you god is already revealing to you the blueprint you prayed already and said lord as i'm coming to church give me a road map on how to make sense and then to manifest as an overcomer this is answer to your prayer hear my cry oh god and attend to my prayer uh-huh from the ends of the earth 
will I cry unto you when my heart is overwhelmed it says lead me to the rock that is higher than I verse 3 it says for thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy verse 4 I will abide in thy tabernacle forever I will trust in the covert of thy wings believers prayer is not just for give me give me give me there are times that prayer is what supplies the strength and the stamina to push through when Jesus was in Gethsemane you would think he would just be singing and walking around the Bible says he prayed he was about to to embark on something that had an eternal value to everybody on earth he needed to pray the Bible says he prayed three times repeating the same words some of you may need to go back from church today return back home and pray use this week to pray why because there are all kinds of giants there are obstacles there are all kinds of demonic things that are coming to fight the devil over to fight God over your life don't give them room you must pray number four mm. are you ready for number four maintain a lifestyle and an atmosphere of joy maintain a lifestyle and an atmosphere of joy in this kingdom joy is very powerful nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10 very quickly nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10 the last sentence says for the joy of the lord is your strength everybody say my strength is the joy of the lord yes sir Bazanji kunyaba God is able to use your joy as a fetcher to bring strength to your life. Can I tell you there is nothing I know that frustrates the devil like watching a believer laugh and rejoice when he's brought his best at you. You mean in spite of the fact that your son died in spite of the fact that you lost your now you understand job chapter one the bible says the moment you see why job was a powerful man he was filled with mysteries he knew what to do he said hey i can lose everything but the one thing that will get them back is my joy can i tell you this no matter what you lose if the devil does not succeed in taking away your joy believe me everything you lost only went on errand it is coming back That's why we sang that song. Say to the weary ones, your God will surely come. He will come and save you. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Let's hurry up. Philippians 4 and verse 4. Mm. Rejoice in the Lord. He never said rejoice in your situation there are times that it does not make sense to rejoice in your situation so you rejoice in the Lord and again I say rejoice someone prophesy to yourself say myself rejoice can I tell you you must obtain grace from God listen listen you must obtain grace from God to win yourself from this lifestyle of gloominess and anger what is wrong good morning what is good about the morning you see when you do those kinds of things you are you are already programming yourself for defeat joy there are people you see who are very happy and jovial and you think they are rejoicing because everything is already at work no they are rejoicing to make everything line up 
not because everything is already lined up no next time you find out that things happen in your life that challenge your faith the first thing you should do is father i may not know what is happening but like job even if i have to sit on the ground i will still worship the bible did not say job sat down please prepare to give us that scripture job chapter one after job heard all of those things the bible says job he rent his garment listen to me and he sat on the ground and worshiped on hearing all of these kinds of things joy habakkuk chapter 3 17 to 19 a classic on the administration of joy although the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall fruit be in the vine the labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls verse 18 yet ah yet i will rejoice after the medical report yet i will rejoice after the situation that is happening within your territory i rejoice and i will joy in the god of my salvation now listen it, it, it matters who you are rejoicing in he calls him the god who can save me yahoshua where you get the word joshua the one who saves i am rejoicing because he is able to save even to the uttermost he is able to save even to the uttermost he is able to save even to the uttermost can i tell you this no matter what you lose in life make up your mind to not lose joy let me tell you what joy is not joy is not just laughing like a clown no there are times you don't have that strength joy is an inner state of rest and merriment a a, a confidence that affects your emotions derived from the fact that god is still alive and is still in charge There are times that it may not make sense you may not see wind and you may not see rain but you must maintain your joy here's what the bible says it says he that weepeth bearing precious seeds he said he shall doubtless return rejoicing bringing in the sheaves that they that sow in tears they will reap in joy not with joy joy is a realm you will carry the food in the kitchen that means if you cannot enter the kitchen there is no food for you it is not with joy if it says with joy then joy is a tool in joy means it is a realm you enter to guarantee your harvest it was papa copeland i was told that asked god's servant bishop david oedeko and said even though you we are the ones who taught you on faith you seem to have gotten tremendous results and look at the crowds and all of that and bishop oedipo replied according to the story and he said i dance with joy i dance every one of these people there are times when it does not make sense you will need to go to the shop alone and begin to give god glory in an empty shop that has nothing there there are times you need to walk around that house and just begin to give God praise that does not make sense to thank him and say Lord I know you are faithful are we blessed never allow anything take your joy it's a commitment that I made with my life can I tell you joy has a health value in your life joy has a finance value in your life joy has a um, always it profits you when you know how to be joyful so there are many of us here by this by this word you need to repent of all this gloominess 
and you refuse yourself from sleeping and you wake up in the night asking all kinds of questions no give him joy and give him praise you go to the office tomorrow and they look at you and say are you aware that the discussion throughout last week was on you well it may not be the best but i give god praise you kick your car on monday morning and it looks like it's not starting you don't complicate the issues by almost destroying what is left in the car you just give god praise you're driving and someone almost looks like he wants to just hit you and you can squeeze your hand through the window because you want to insult the person no obtain the maturity to bring back your hand i choose to rejoice i choose to live a life of joy prophesy to yourself it's a choice i choose to live a life of joy someone is speaking principalities and powers are hearing you i choose to live a life of joy let your situations and circumstances hear you it's a choice that in the name of jesus here in abuja in the name of jesus across europe everywhere in ministry in business in my pursuit in my career i choose joy joy go ahead and pray just one minute before we continue my hands to honor you because your word is true i lift my hands to honor your word is true that i will have my baby your word is true that i am the head and not the tail your word is true that i am above and not beneath because your word is true i will see so when i lift my hands it's not because i know the answer i know his word is true and the bible has already given me comfort that while i look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen he already tells me the things that are seen are temporal but the things that are unseen someone needs to begin to look at things that are unseen the greatness that is before you the anointing and the mantle that is at the other side the other side of your tears the other side of your pain man of god do not give up in ministry it looks like things are not working but you are still called the hand of god is upon you let no man despise the grace and the gifting of god upon your life let no man despise your ministry let no man despise the investment of the spirit upon your family upon your destiny it does not yet appear but the hand of god is still on you i lift my hands to honor you i lift my hands to honor you hallelujah we have to wrap up number five and then we pray that a man can sit on the ground and yet worship powerful you would think the only way to worship is to lift your hands and jump but it is possible to also sit on the ground even in shame even in pain even in seeming defeat and yet worship are you ready for number five the fifth key every time you step into seasons where things don't seem to be working in your life please listen to me you must obtain grace to engage the prophetic the prophetic is a weapon of power when it is administered within the boundary of scripture that every time you are in seasons that look like the day of adversity you will need the prophetic they are taken for a prey and none say it 
restore there has to be a voice other than you that can speak restoration there has to be a voice other than you that can speak lifting are we together now when samaria was in decadence hunger we've shared it here women were eating their children then came this strange prophet of god and he made a declaration by the spirit by this time tomorrow moses came and held his staff and told the nation of israel god has seen your pain for these years and he has sent me as a deliverer all you need to do is to believe god and to believe me i am going to pharaoh and he stood before pharaoh he said pharaoh time up thus saith the lord god of the hebrews let my people go when the plagues began to come pharaoh said no 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 no. this is too much let the men go leave the women and the children moses said no way we are going plus our cattle everything I have watched with with shock even to me at the way the prophetic works in the lives of people who understand it and engage it i have had the honor and the privilege to speak over people over impossible situations that sometimes even me the man of god who was used to minister to them i can almost say my god will this situation turn around and then I'm not telling you what I studied I am telling you a reality this is by the privilege of God's mercy I know what the prophetic can do when when a genuine prophetic mantle from a man of God's lips a prophetic anointing a spoken word backed up by the integrity of God's word when it lands over your situation you just step back and watch it work wonders in your life I told you here and I've shared this with you the prophetic does not just reveal listen to me the prophetic creates the prophetic can lift a man from your yesterday into your tomorrow believe me and you have come tonight to encounter that dimension of the prophetic this meeting will not be over until that word comes upon your life listen to me because to live an overcoming life god himself designed these principles the prophetic engaged with understanding and by a prophet the lord god brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet were they preserved it says believe in the lord your god so shall you be established I, I say this with with every sense of respect and and I don't mean to brag please forgive me but there is a level of arrogance that is in the world today that will keep punishing many people and they will keep going through needless pain because of the arrogance of neglecting the prophetic in as much as I know as I would always observe that mistakes have been made here and there in the body of Christ people have you know mismanaged the prophetic but can I tell you it is an error if you find yourself ignoring the prophetic in one night I mean literal 24 hour one night God is able to through the vehicle of the prophetic lift people listen please come let me use one person to show you how the prophetic works anyone come you stand here there are times where the normal way to climb this is by walking climb up this is how to walk normally is that true please go back there are times that there can be challenges right here and you are attempting to climb now please take one step and stay here the destiny is that you climb right here but there are all kinds of things stopping you at that point hold my hands the prophetic are you ready to jump prophetic does not just take you one step it will stand and push you like this are we together now thank you the prophetic does not follow the sequence of the natural course of things no it is a dimension outsourced as a system of advantage 
Yes, sir. Hmm. The mysteries of the kingdom that can help men to rise. One prophetic word over your business. One prophetic word over your ministry. You can be fasting and praying by yourself. God is not stupid to have given gifts in the body. This is where sometimes believers, we have to be careful. You know, we have this mindset, oh, look, don't worry about you. You just love God alone and know him for yourself. Listen to me. God himself set in motion these, these offices in the body of Christ. It is an advantage for the saints. Even when Paul encountered Jesus, he still went back to the body for the continuity of his growth. I was so honored and blessed when, you know, His Excellency the Ambassador came and he was just jumping and celebrating Jesus. And in as much as it looked very funny and childlike, I said, this man will never remain at the same level. He has found a key that many people do not have the maturity to find. When the ark was being restored, David was dancing and rejoicing and thanking God. And his own wise wife came and said, no, 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 this is not royalty. You are bringing shame to yourself and, and dishonor. And David said, I am, I am, he told Saul's daughter, he says, I am rejoicing before the Lord who took the kingdom from your father and gave me so that he will not now take it from me and give someone else. The Bible says God had the rubbish she was saying and she died barren. Can I tell you this? I'm not indoctrinating you negatively. You are intelligent people. There is a way the prophetic can be administered that makes people behave like animals. That's not what I'm teaching you here. But I am telling you this. If you have the faith to receive the prophetic, ladies and gentlemen, your life can literally change overnight. It's true. The prophetic has rules the first rule is faith faith in god and faith in the vessel rule number two honor honor to god and honor to the vessel these are the rules of the prophetic it does not just work arbitrarily no no please help them the prophetic has rules faith in god and faith in the vessel he will use. Please help them. I'm, I'm seeing angelic activities in this place now. Just help them, please. Just help them. You know, when you begin to teach like this, the Bible calls the angels that they walk in partnership with the word to confirm the words of his servant. So that's what is happening right now. I'm seeing several angelic activities. Just help people because people are already receiving all kinds of impartations. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. I lay me down and I slept. I waked for the Lord sustained me. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. I remember one time a gentleman who was, I think it was that something happened and they relieved him from his job. And when he came and met me, usually I would just pray and tell him, trust God for another job. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me, said, prophesy to him that you are making decrees that he is going back to that job. And it was a very good job. Uh, when I said it, I could see the guy saying, sir, you don't know this is a XYZ oil company. I said, what is my business? Who among them can create oil? Are they not mining it? The one who created the oil is now making a decree listen I lie not probably the person is even here or maybe he's listening it was within three days three days 
and it was a very very strange thing that one of the executive members who is a christian a member of a, a popular church in this nation had a dream and in that dream a voice spoke to him and said bring back this young boy that this young boy is an asset he got up met with his fellow executives when they called him and he called me i said next time enjoy your testimony but next time do not be unwise not every man of god is a herbalist and not everybody is stupid i will not come before an intelligent congregation globally like this and just make a caricature of your pedigree and your intelligence except that this works believe me it does the prophetic can change literally 180 degrees the tides of someone's life but the challenge is that most people just say amen but they don't believe truly they don't thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting my head ah. thank you for lifting Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. I'm about to pray for you now and declare that this prophetic dimension you must experience it this night. There has to be a word that will come because many of you you are going through all kinds of seasons right now. And I want you to know that there are weapons in this kingdom that can help us live the overcomer's life. We are overcomers. It is true. Who came here in this auditorium? I'm not doing personal prophecy now. I'm going to speak, but the Lord just put it. There's a woman who came here. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. This is why you came here. Please, who is that person? Very quickly, I just want to pray for you. The Lord wants to visit you now. Help her. We give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. We give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. We give you the highest, highest praise to the King. We give you the loudest, yeah. loudest praise to the King. We lift up holy hands. We lift up holy hands. We give you, we give you, we give you the highest praise. We give you, we give you, we give you, we give you, we give you the highest. There's such a powerful anointing in front here. I'm going to pray for you now. Muimaka, Muimaka, Muimaka. We give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. Give you worship, worship. We bow down, we bow down, the deepest worship. I want to pray for you, and I want you to believe you will marvel and wonder at what the prophetic is able to do. Just place your hand on your stomach, the power of God is strong upon you, every one of you. No, you just, just on your dress now, you don't have to, Father. In the name of Jesus, that they may know that you are the one true God. Right now, I decree and declare for those of you who are in front here and those who are following by way of media, an anointing is coming on you now. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, may that power, if there be any spirit that is responsible for any delay in childbirth, 
I command that you go out now. Out now. Out now. Out now. In the name of Jesus. Out now. Out. My God. The sun, I'm seeing fire just resting on you. I decree and declare. We cause that spirit now. According to the time of life. I stretch my hands. Return with your miracle children. Single children. Twins. Triplets. Receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare. It doesn't matter how it has been before now. I announce to you by the God of heaven. Let that condition change now. You will return back and you will return. For many of you, you will not exceed one month. You will see that you have taken in already. And so shall it be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please return to your seat very quickly. hallelujah if you are in business here just lift your hands i just sense that anointing like really you are not just that you are doing by the way but you are really into this thing i want to pray for you i want you to believe god father please agree with me as i declare you will be surprised because there are some of you things have been tied down this is what i see in the realm of the spirit there are doors that should have opened but I'm seeing powers tying it down. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost and by the ministry of the prophetic between now and the next one month, I speak to you by the Spirit of God. Return with strange testimonies. Return with strange testimonies. Help me, please. Return with strange testimonies. Can someone help this woman, please? Return with strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Every financial door that has refused to open. We have been commanded to bless. Therefore I declare. In addition to your diligence. In addition to your value. In addition to the products and the services that you are involved with. I place this prophetic edge. Upon the works of your hands. Go and prosper. Go and prosper. Go and prosper. Go and prosper. Let me pray for people who have gone down spiritually. Different aspects of your life. Because of the challenges over your life. Your prayer life has gone down. Your word study life has gone down. Some of you even hate church. You hate the house of God. You don't want anything to do with God again. I'm praying right now let fire from heaven rest upon your destiny now fresh seal for the things of god fresh seal for prayer fresh seal for fasting fresh seal for the study of the word fresh love for the house of god Every long-standing issue that has refused to give way in your life, that has lingered more than necessary, in the name of Jesus, this night, we bring it to an end. This night, we bring it to an end. For some of you, this week will not pass before you receive your letters. New season for you. And let me pray for those who are in ministry. Now is not the time to be discouraged. Now is not the time to be discouraged. There are mantles, there are graces that God wants to release upon people. Now is not the time to falter. Now is not the time to draw back. I decree and declare over your church, over your ministry, over your prayer platform, over whatever platform God is using to help you serve his purposes I decree and declare may grace rest upon it now now hear me 
I want to pray particularly for families that either have been bereaved or have gone through all kinds of losses or are currently going through circles and patterns of pain. You don't have to come out. But I want to minister the power of God right now. Listen to me. Grief is a spirit and is a dangerous spirit that must never be allowed in your vicinity regardless the guys. Grief is a terrible spirit. It is a spirit that can reproduce its results in the life of an individual. I want to speak to you now. For everyone who has gone through or is going through situations of pain, many of you delay in your expectations. Many of you persecutions, criticisms, all kinds of tribulations. Many of you sorrow upon sorrow. But I want to speak to you now. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Ah. Hey, hey. Let hope rise tonight. Now I decree and declare for all those who have been bereaved, all those who are being bereaved, all those who are going through all kinds of challenges, inexplainable, many of them, find the peace of God now. <laughs> Father, you who is the Prince of Peace, administer the peace that surpasses all understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ. And let me echo the voice of the spirit to you it shall be for you for a testimony it shall be for you for a testimony it shall be for you for a testimony it shall be for you for a testimony, for for a testimony. hear me joseph looked at his brothers and said while you meant it for evil that god is able to turn it for good i decree again one more time it shall be for you for a testimony hear me the final prayer tonight before i make the altar call is the staying power to go through these seasons the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small for some of you the word of the lord for you tonight is hold on you have come too far to go back hold on God sent you to Abuja, you are about to relocate and go away and saying, I'm tired of this city, I've lived a frustrated life. God is ministering to you, hold on. I'm still walking. Allow me to finish what I am doing. God sent you to ministry and it looks like nothing is working. Help this woman, hold on. God is ministering to you, hold on. Hold on. God told you to do what you are doing and you are still failing in it. Hold on hold on he's dependable you can trust him man of God just because you have not prophesied does not mean you are not a prophet he's making you hold on hold on woman of power woman of grace just because he has not given you a platform yes does not mean you are not called hold on while he walks on you hold on hold on that is the prophetic word hold on don't give up you have gone too far hold on hold on in the name of Jesus you hold on you have to return from this service knowing that I am not giving up I have received the strength to finish that the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes you lost a job apply for another one you did a business and it failed start another one you did ministry and it looked like it's not working settle down and find out what you might be doing wrong and get back again one thing that you will not fail to do is to continue i've taken in 30 times 20 times 10 times 15 times five times and it looks like it's not worked go back again again is a powerful word 
again means hope again means god is not done again means there is no full stop and adam knew his wife again and they who fell yesterday rose again i decree and declare the strength that you need for the journey that is ahead there is a lot that God has in store in this end time for people across several areas in ministry, career, business. I decree and declare the strength from heaven that can empower a man to stand in the midst of challenges and yet rejoice and yet continue. May that strength rest upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. While standing, I'm not going to waste your time. You've had the sermon. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. Jesus, I need you desperately. You are saying, I desire him with all my heart. I desire to love him with everything. I'm tired of playing church tired of playing religion I truly want you wherever you are or you are saying apostle I want to rededicate my life I, I, I can't call the name of what I am doing the faith work I need to start afresh wherever you are all the overflows especially inside and the galleries I'm going to count one to five very quickly we are out of time I want you to run and come and stand before Jesus now it's not compulsory you can choose to stay back but the Lord is giving you an opportunity now. Remember that decisions decide destiny. Come. Come running. Come running. Come running to the mercy seat. Flow truly. I'm running to Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Everything starts with him. Mm. Everything. Hallelujah. 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 Three, I'm counting to five. Let's minimize movement so that we honor this altar call. Now, please look at me and all those who are responding to this call from your homes, from wherever it is. We're here because we believe in Jesus. He is the Savior. He is the Lord, the author of wisdom, the one who empowers everything that has been taught here. For those of you who have come out here, I celebrate and truly congratulate you for making this noble decision. Rebels don't come to Jesus. They run away from him. That you have come to him is proof that you respect his lordship. Now please may I request that you lift your right hand high above your head. And I want you to say this from the depth of your heart. Jesus is here. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Mean it from your heart, whether you're rededicating your life or making this decision the first time. Go ahead. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I declare that I believe in you. I believe that you are Savior. I believe that you are Redeemer. I decree and declare, based on the authority of Scripture, that from today you are my Savior, you are my Lord you are my king i receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today till forever i am a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb a recipient of the life of god Keep your hands lifted father thank you for these blessed hands and these precious people 
who have come to declare your lordship over their lives by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and i declare over you that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life in the name of jesus and now i commend you to god and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified i declare that by the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit you will continue to grow from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen thank you for this decision um i want you to follow the counselors they are waving the placard please just follow them they'll have a minute or two with you and you'll be back to your seat let's honor and celebrate them let's honor and celebrate them thank you hallelujah praise the name of the lord now just two important announcements and then we're done first thank you for your patience by the grace of God, next week, we are going to be graduating our School of Ministry students. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, the graduation ceremony is usually um, quite a, a serious activity in the ministry. I'd like you to pray for all the graduates. And we're going to be usually, what we do is we're in a moment of prayer and fasting, spiritual emphasis. This is just the students. So pray for the students as they pray and fast and prepare. And please do well to come celebrate with them. Well, they'll, they'll be receiving their impartation and they'll be receiving their certificates. We thank God. God has granted grace. It's been a wonderful journey of over six months plus training and building them in the matters of the kingdom. And now is the time to bless them and to release them. So please do well. Family members who are connected to these ones, please cooperate with them so that you can make that day a memorable one for them in the name of jesus christ time as always is 5 p.m on the dot and i'll request that um you please come prepared to honor and celebrate them in whatever way you see fit um they will give you the details in the course of the week but please you're not only coming for koinonia service to be blessed you will be blessed as always but just know that uh graduates are expecting you to just come and encourage them invite everyone that you can find around town and let's celebrate jesus and you this is the first set that is graduating in the abuja campus so we glorify god for his faithfulness <laughs> hallelujah koinonia school of ministry is in its eighth year now but the, the first seven has been in zaria and then eighth the eighth year now has been in um, abuja here so we thank god for what god is doing Praise the name of the Lord. And um, to remind all workers again that by God's grace, it's just a few weeks left uh, to the workers' appreciation dinner. Please, all heads of department, do well to communicate this to your people. Praise the name of the Lord. We usually have an end of year workers' appreciation dinner just to thank and to honor all who labor in this ministry. We believe in honor not just honor to people around, but even to those who have joined hands to see that this work um, makes progress and we're, we're indebted to them and we thank them. So please do well to cooperate with all the workers on this wise. The Lord bless you and the Lord honor you in Jesus' name. The final announcement is to encourage you that as a ministry, in as much as God has done us good, we believe in in-gathering, strategic in-gathering. And so I want to encourage you Make sure you don't come to church alone. Every time you are coming to church, make sure that you are inviting someone. This is not just to have crowds of people. Our passion is much more than that. But to give people an opportunity, it will be very selfish for you to come and get blessed. You're getting transformed, having testimonies, and then you're leaving people around. So in your place of work, everywhere you are, do the work of an evangelist let people know that jesus is saving healing delivering transforming by the word imparting all kinds of graces over people and give them an opportunity to come and be transformed by the power of the word as you do so the lord bless you in jesus name please rise up on your feet as we close the lord bless you your week beginning is blessed in jesus name you will only go from glory to glory in the mighty and matchless name of jesus 
Amen and amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let it rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. God bless you and see you on Sunday. Oh, by his stripes.